Hello and let's talk about the blooming stock markets. Almost every important international agency is predicting grave times ahead for the global economy. The IMF says that the global growth for the year will be at 4, minus 4.9% and the International Labour Organization says that 305 million jobs have been lost globally. India is following these global trends too. We see this both in media reports, in research reports and in the day-to-day -day realities of our lives. People are losing jobs, businesses are shutting down, manufacturing is in the doldrums and worst of all, there is no sign of the pandemic relenting. Amid all of this, surprisingly, the stock market continues to do well. Some weeks ago, we discussed this issue of the stock market on the show and this positive trend continues. According to a report in the Indian Express, the Sensex has gained 40% since March 23rd. So how is this happening? Who is investing? And what does this mean for the markets in India as a whole? We talked to journalist Anindya Chakravarti to find out. Thank you, Anindya, for joining us. So a couple of weeks ago, we did talk about the stock market itself, the fairly unique and strange situation of the stock market doing very well, even as economies all around the world are tanking, so to speak. And that trend yeah. about the economies continues. But let's talk a bit more about what this implies, and you've also written about it. So to begin with, uh, the key question, uh, for, just for some setting context once again, does the same reasons stick for the stock market continuing to rise? As in, why are people continuing to invest in them? And who are these people in the first place? So, uh, obviously, most of the people, you know, there are about 4 crore DP accounts in India. DP accounts are uh, accounts that you need to invest in the stock markets, out of which uh, the last data that was available says that 75% are dormant. They're inactive. So, which means that about 1 crore DP accounts are active. Uh, amongst them, uh, now 1 crore DP accounts means less than 1% of India's population, right? So, uh, in some cases, it would be 2 DP accounts within a single family and maybe there would be some double DP accounts. I mean, a person might have a DP with 2 separate accounts and one is dormant. So, in any case, let's say 1 crore active DP account. That broadly, if you look at households, I would say not more than 1.5% of India's population, right? Uh, because the rich would have two or three DP accounts in a single family. That's very likely. Um, now, uh, the point is, this tells us that we know that if we look at the last available income tax data, that those who earn more than about 2 lakh rupees a month, which is taxable income in terms of household income, would account for about, I would say, 0 0.5 to 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 percent of India's total population in terms of households. Uh, again, uh, that means that it is the top 1 percent who own 73 percent of all wealth who are investing right now. Now, you would wonder where are they getting the money when there are, uh, you know, everything has been shut down, the economy is in such a terrible situation. It is true that the rich have been affected in this lockdown. Money flow has been affected. Many people who have businesses, they probably, their businesses aren't running, they're shut. Uh, CFOs, CXOs, CEOs, top management in corporate sector, big financial sector uh, people, they uh, have had pay cuts, significant pay cuts. Maybe their bonuses have been held back. But even if you look at that, they have massive amounts of savings already assets right property so many have two three homes from which at least two out of them get them rent right so they have this monthly rent flow which comes in uh, many have uh, loads of cash in fixed deposits so they earn interest every month from that uh, they have bonds they have stock investments which give them dividends so there is a continuous flow of money which comes in from their financial assets and from their property, right. even if they don't have an actual income flow coming from mm -hmm. productive assets, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they have that money. Now, across the world, we know what has happened is that the rich are saving more. Why? Because, you know, this is the time when people go for their foreign holidays and they spend lakhs of rupees on that. They haven't spent any of that money. It's sitting with them. They haven't gone out to their five-star hotel, uh, favorite five-star hotel, to eat uh, and spend 10,000, 20,000 rupees in a single meal. Uh, they haven't thrown lavish parties, which uh, with catering would run into, uh, run bills of lakhs of rupees. So all that money is being saved. It is additional savings. So across the world, the rich are 
spending less, earning less, spending less and saving more. What can they do with these financial assets? Mm -hmm. uh, we know, Prashant, that across the world, central banks have made it easier to borrow for businesses. This is the dogma of neoliberalism, we know, mm -hmm. that reduce interest rates as much as possible. Apparently, if you reduce interest rates, people will borrow, borrow. and this will lead to massive productivity. Yes. We know that this doesn't necessarily happen. There are external reasons for why investments take place. Uh, now, what does that mean? That means that anyone who is who saves their money in a long-term deposit in a bank isn't getting good returns. I mean, uh, I think that uh, fixed deposits now fetch you about 5.5% beyond a year, right? Uh, they are taxable, your returns are taxable. So if you're in the highest income bracket, which the rich people would be, um, then uh, after deducting tax, you'll get 3, 3.5%. Three that is... Uh, Prashant, less than inflation right now. Right. So you can imagine what that means. That means that you'd rather spend it today than save it because it's less than inflation you return. That is what is pushing a lot of these additional savings into the stock markets right now, Prashant. Yeah. So the, the key question here is that uh, does this stock, this is spending in the stock market count as some form of investment as well in the sense that we traditionally understand investment because a lot of the discussion yeah. around the economic situation has been about how the you know the people are not able to spend of course we're talking about the middle classes and the lower middle classes more but yeah in terms of the larger economy itself does this actually mark a sign of people spending or is it something else you know it uh, in my opinion it's a sign of a complete lack of faith and hope in the economy it's pure sign of uncertainty why because let's take two sets of data here uh, in uh, what we call market turnover is the total transactions buying and selling that is taking place in the market. So if you add market turnover, and this is data presented by my uh, friend Prashant Nair on CNBC TV 18, uh, essentially what you see is that market turnover in June has gone up sharply. If you take the average of January to Ma uh, May, then compared to that, June market turnover is about 52% more. 86 odd percent of that market turnover, if I remember correctly, is from individual rich people, high net worth individuals, individual DP accounts, and some brokerage, small brokerages. Uh, institutional investment in early July is now just about 14 percent of the total market turnover, right. which means that no one is actually investing for the long term. Simultaneously, look at another thing. Um, Let's take May versus June, Prashant. I told, told, talked about market turnover. Right. In June, market turnover went up by 37% compared to May. That means number of transactions have gone up significantly. And the value of those transactions have gone up significantly. But uh, money flowing into equity mutual funds, which is mutual funds which invest in stock markets, went down by 95%. Why? Because people took out their money from mutual funds. They redeemed it. Redemptions in equity mutual funds went up by 75% compared to May, which means that people have no faith in the future. They don't want their money locked up. They don't want to give it to a fund manager. They right. don't have faith in the long-term economy. They don't have faith in fund managers. Right. So they're basically taking out their cash. They're saying, let me have this cash with me. I'll try and do my best to earn whatever I can. I'll earn it by trading, right? Here's another... Uh, important point to look at, which is deliveries, right? Uh, now, what is a delivery? Delivery, you know, in the old days, if you bought a stock, uh, uh, Prashant, then uh, this was before, I think, uh, the 19, late 90s or early 2000s. Uh, if you bought a share, then you essentially got a piece of paper. It said that you have got so many. It's a share certificate, right? right. And uh, many people saved those shared certificates and passed it on over generations and much later, you saw that, okay, I'm pretty rich because <laughs> my grandfather bought some shares. Right. I mean, some lucky people. Unfortunately, not, I'm not one of those. But uh, uh, now everything is dematerialized. It's a, it, it's, it's a share market's actually moved to electronic uh, medium pretty early. So but this is why it's called a DMAT account, right? Uh, but you still get a share certificate when you buy it. Hmm? When you get that share certificate, it means that share has been delivered to you from the previous owner. 
This is called delivery. Now, when do you take delivery? When you want to keep that share, you want to see that money grow, and then when you sell it, you'll have to hand over that share certificate. Delivery moves on to someone else. So when we look at the percentage of delivery, it gives us a sense as to how many people are trading in the short term. They're buying a share, looking at the price. When the price goes up, they're selling it. Selling it. They're not actually looking at the underlying business at all. Mm -hmm. um, deliveries right now in June were at 15% of the total number of uh, shares being bought. 15%. That means if 100 shares were being bought, only 15 were being delivery was being taken by people. Now, this is the lowest in the last 17 years. I just looked at the data on NSE. This is National Stock Exchange, where a lot of, which is the massive volume, most of yeah. the volume of right now. This is the lowest since 2003 March. That is 17 years. Uh, even in March, National Stock Exchange delivery was close to 21%. So, when the markets have gone up by 40%, Deliveries have gone down sharply to just 15%. That tells you very clearly that people are speculating. They're using it as a gambling uh, space. Rich people are putting in money. When it rises, they're uh, uh, selling it. They're quickly selling it. They're coming out, which is why you're seeing these market fluctuations take place so quickly right. and so fast as well. Right. And so, fine. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, please wait. No, no, I'm just saying it's a clear sign that the people feel that we don't know what's going to happen. In exactly. The right. Let me keep my money. Why should I hand it over to someone? We know what happened to the Franklin Templeton credit funds. They crashed. That money is not coming back to people for the next four or five years. That is the estimate being made. So people are saying, we don't want to hand it over to the next expert. I don't care. Let that expert uh, be an expert. I'll make my money as much as possible right now. And if I can't, I'll get out as quickly as possible. I'm not going to sit there Watch my money drop from a, you know, from a Sensex level uh, or a Nifty level of twelve thousand five hundred odd to um, uh, very uh, to crash to eight thousand. I don't want that to happen. I don't want someone else to hold my money. Right. As soon as it starts to fall, I'm going to get out. I'm going to keep my money around me as close as possible. Right. And Anandya, finally, so we do. So we have talked about what the rich are doing clearly. The question is, what about? the not so rich, the middle class who are investing in various formats, especially in the market. They basically, also. you know, there's been an interesting thing that uh, when I started tracking the stock markets in 2005, as uh, when I was part of a, a stock market business channel, I was mm -hmm. one of the people running it and I had to anchor daily news, uh, stock market news. Mm -hmm. We used to notice that if the markets went up in the US, the next day markets went up in, the, uh, in India. If they fell, markets fell in India. Now there's been a bit of what is called decoupling. That's because mm -hmm. most of the uh, investment that has taken place in the recent past, right, has been from mutual funds, from mm -hmm. domestic institutions, which includes the LICs of the world, uh, government as well. FIIs no longer determine the market uh, movement or market move. A lot of the money is actually from domestic institutions. Why? Because Mutual fund participation has increased over the last few years. And a lot of these mutual funds allow you to invest even 500 rupees. So a lot of people, middle class, middle, middle class, low middle class people have entered this mutual fund space. One reason is why, because interest rates are so low. So you're not going to get a good return on uh, putting your money in the bank. So people are putting in a little bit. Now, these people are going to get caught. Because what happens? Let's say that the rich have put in their money and they're going to get out as soon as the market starts to crack. Something happens in the US, suddenly COVID-19 recovers, what will happen? The market will crash, right? right. Uh, there's some geopolitical tension, the market will crash. The rich will essentially try to get out right then. So what we call supply of stock in the market will increase dramatically, and there won't be any buyers. Right. What happens then? Then the market keeps collapsing. Mm -hmm. The middle class investor is going to carry the can. Essentially, the middle class investor who has no control over the money because they, are, uh, they also don't have the confidence. You know, only the rich have confidence about their money. The middle class don't. The middle class stay away from the markets also because they don't have confidence. They don't think they're going to get richer. The rich think they'll keep getting richer. Right now, they're a little uncertain and underconfident. So the rich will take the profits the middle class, the low middle class who were forced into the stock markets over the last few years 
thanks to tax policies and the fact that uh, the uh, uh, the central banks prodded by the government had uh, brought down interest rates they will be holding and seeing that their wealth has got wiped out the money that they saved over the years year after year putting in little by little every few months they will see that money basically collapsing rich will get richer the middle class will actually move further down the divide within the middle class between the upper middle as the affluent and the lower middle class this is going to increase thank you so much arunji for talking to us thank you prashant that's all we have in this episode of let's talk we'll be back on monday with major news developments from the country until then keep watching news click